the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. One of my favourite things about working here is Sam. Sam's a wonderful new addition to the team. Good morning. And uh, Sam regularly lets us know what's happening in Ellie's life. <laughs> and <laughs> Ellie then true. finds out that and we've been told and she spirals. Furious. And um, starts swinging. But Sam revealed something that you guys did on the weekend. Sam? Sam? Yeah, so uh, me and Ellie caught up for dinner with Scott Cunningham, who's a regular fill-in for yes, Ellie. Yes, filled in when Ellie away. went to America, yeah. Um, and then, I, I, so I didn't know about this, but uh, we were going there to, to Scott's house to sage his new apartment. <laughs> so, and you did the saging, Ellie? Ellie. Well, okay. White okay. Ellie. <laughs> like, this is not an extreme thing. This is quite common, no? Well, don't you guys sage a, a place when you... I have well, it? I mean, mm. we're, we're, not, we're not witches. <laughs> I've never, <laughs> never saved that. But also, never Scott saved. got you I have over done to do it. Several Ellie. blood sacrifices over the years. <laughs> so, I mean, saging your own place is one thing, but no, Scott got you in to do it. Well, he, he, that suggests you have some expertise in the field. No, 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 no. Come, on. I, I, I incense my own house and stuff, but like. <laughs> weird. Um, he's had a lot of um, bad luck in yeah, the Yeah, he has. Like, he's well, broken into several times. You've got, the times you've got bad juju. I've got to, I've got yes, to get rid yeah. of it for you. So uh, did you Google saging? No, you just go in and... You, She's done it before. Yeah, Nathan. but like, what are you... You don't just like burn it and just like wave it around. You're yeah. supposed to have some intentions. Yeah, for, like, what, you say anything what do you negative, you've got to leave. Yeah. Um. Do you? <laughs> like how? Be gone, evil spirit! <laughs> yeah. Be gone! Like that? Yeah, or a bit yeah, more yeah, like sure. relaxed? Why not? Yeah. Just get the blower back out and you blow it all out. It's amazing. Every single friendship group has a witch in it. <laughs> <laughs> you may not know who she is, but suddenly when Eventually, things like this happen... She reveals herself. Well, she I pulls also, a sage out of a bag and I, sets it on fire. Fire. So do you him a stick of selenite as well, which is a, a protective selenite. crystal. You leave it at the front door and it stops the evil energy's going. But what if the I evil energy it. comes in through the back door? Well then oh, stuff. Well <laughs> I can help I can help you there. Um <laughs> That's a yoni egg. <laughs> it's just better to shut the day down evil. and walk away. Um Ellie <laughs> Crystals. You're a crystal person too. I, I don't know if they actually work, but But do you have crystals? I've got crystals, but I don't know what they do. <laughs> You seem to know what that crystal is. So, what do you just Scott Google does? and go, I'll get that one? It sounds good. No, you just you see what you're called to. You know? Oh, I Namaste. see. The crystal tells yeah, you out whether it needs. Me. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, how many houses have you saged? <laughs> just the one. A plus your but own. But if you need one, let but me know. But did you have your own sage stick at home? Or did yeah. you have to buy one well, specially? I, you got, had I one. got one for him because I didn't want to give him mine. Okay, right. Yeah. It has to be an individual thing. All you got to do is save saging these so days. So true. Um, yeah, how much does a catch. sage stick cost these days? Oh, uh, like nine ninety five. Does the whole coven pitch in? or? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot more questions, but I don't think Ellie wants Sam, to answer them. Keep the information coming. Yes. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do. <laughs> it's important to know. And if you need your house saged, um, <laughs> Ellie will come me. around. <laughs> but for a fee... Obviously, yeah, a bit big, of extra big money. Big yeah, for sure. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Harry was innocently just trying to revel in a pub. Yeah. Um, well, and 10.30 at night, trying to pick up. Uh, <laughs> there was a girl in a darkened pub. Yep. Reading a book. Reading a book in a in a, like, on a Saturday night. lit room. And it's like, oh, come on. You know what you're doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of hipsters in that area, though. I know, but they're like so, at so 10 hip. at night reading a Maybe book. Maybe she was waiting for somebody and she thought she'd just read while oh, they, before they right. got there. Rory Gilmore used to do it. Yeah. The Gilmore Girls, whenever she'd have five seconds, she'd pull a book out of a bag. Hmm. It's, what, those people exist, do they? But what's their Instagram broken? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Let's go to Kelly in Byford. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Hi, Confused, Kelly. Kelly. Confused, a little bit worried now, about this whole <laughs> reading a book in weird places situation. Are you the reader or did you spot somebody else doing it? Unfortunately, I am the reader in this instance, yes. Oh, okay. Here we go. Where were you reading a book? <laughs> Um, so just to set the scene, my brother had been living in America and was married to an American and they'd been there for about 10 years. They came over and my parents thought it would be great to take my sister-in-law to an AFL game. Mm -hmm. yes. So they got tickets to the first ever Anzac Day Collingwood versus Essendon. Oh my God, well, that was a history-making match. <laughs> would have been sold out at it the G. It was awesome. Yep, absolutely. The atmosphere was electric. Um, unfortunately, I had a head cold at the time, so I'd uh, popped a couple of cold and flu tablets and I just couldn't get into it. So I sat there reading my book while everyone went crazy around me. What so book were you reading? 
<laughs> I honestly can't even remember. It would have been some soppy old, you know... Like a, like romance, a romance novel. I know, honestly... Yeah, it was. It wasn't anything. It was not anything educational, that's for sure. And it, it was just something that allowed me to sit comfortably in my little seat and uh, let everyone go crazy around me. While but I what's weird I about this, quietly. Kelly, is that the cold and flu tablets knocked you around so much that you couldn't get into the game, and yet, yet you still had the wherewithal to concentrate on a novel. <laughs> it's just so weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This, every, you know, everyone around Absolutely. there was like and going off about you, going, "Oh my God!" Yes. The amount of people that would have given their right arm for a ticket to this game, and look at this woman. With Luckily, the novel. this was so long ago that there was no social media back then. Otherwise, you'd be in big trouble. Oh, you'd be cancelled, Kelly. Yes, you'd be cancelled. You'd be cancelled right <laughs> out. All right, so that is an Australian, an Australian. Reading a book at the AFL Grand Final. Uh, uh, Come no, on. no, the Anzac Day match. Oh, sorry, That's so that. just such a yeah iconic thing. Trish, hello. Oh, hello. Good morning. Oh, Trish. Trish. Okay. Are you the reader or did you witness somebody reading? Uh, no, I witnessed. Full disclosure, I haven't read a novel since 1987 when I left school. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't see the point. Um, but I live in Mayland. Nathan. Hi, sister. Um, how are you? Hi. Good. How was the Bronx um, this morning? Can you, drive past and just, can you drive past and just check on my place, please? Make sure no one's breaking in. Thanks. Sure. No problem. I live on... We live down on the peninsula. Oh, yes. And, okay. Uh, it's the, uh, the, 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 the river loop. Mm. And every morning, I, used, I haven't passed her for years, so I'm not sure if she's killed herself by walking and reading. Yeah. But I used to pass this lady, and I used to, you know, most times people go, good morning, good morning. But no, she would carry this huge paperback novel, yes. and she had her head in this book every day that I saw her. And I used to make up a story thinking, oh, Maybe she's one of the police horse ladies and she's going out for her daily walk and it's the only time she has something that she can do for herself. But it was... it was. So you don't know that. That was just your... Maybe she's one of those police horse ladies. Because that is where the police that horses that are, yeah. I know. I feel she wasn't a local because, other, you know, it was a, <laughs> it's the Peninsula Walk is a beautiful walk. You've got the river, you've got the lakes. It's lovely. But she was fixated. I don't know what book it was. So therefore, oh she God. couldn't be local. She couldn't, couldn't be, be local. Us Maylands local. people don't partake in such no, activities. No, no, no. You're no, too busy absorbing the atmosphere and watching <laughs> your back. No, we're too busy casing your joint to get your TV. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe she was undercover police woman, like pretending to read a book, and really oh. she was watching everything. Reading a book, mm. everybody. Library at home on the couch. Mm. You know what I mean? I usually. I read at the hairdresser. Hairdresser. Yeah, well, while well, the colours on, is, you know, okay. is that all right? That is okay. I'd rather read a book than trashy magazines, yeah, so yeah. I'll take a book. See, they're not stupid places to read a book. That's what we're talking about. Let us know. Stupid places you or you've seen somebody read a book. We just did a little bit of a poll around the studio. Harry, uh, when's the last time you read a book? Probably like year nine, high school. Then, you know, mm. you'd have to read one in year ten. Just watch the movie. Same thing, right? <laughs> same thing. Exactly the same. That's right. Generations of kids read the same book because they were forced to. There was Sally Morgan's My Place. <laughs> <laughs> what were yours? What were the, we had Catcher in the Rye. Yeah, we had Catcher in the Rye. We had Harry Potter, Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, as, as a, a school, school book. book. Yeah. Yeah, what yeah, year? I made it what through most of that. No, that was year, that was year eight, I think. Year eight. At I right never just, knew that was put yeah. in. That was put into the curriculum. Yeah, they threw it in. That's insane. They were literally desperate to get mm. you to read yeah. something, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. Right now we're talking about When's weird the last places. time you read a book? Oh, gosh. It would have been the Big Brother house. And I didn't take it in there. Someone left it in when they got evicted. Yes. And it was and just, just that it was just bored. bored. So that's more than 20 mind. years ago, Nathan. Yeah. Okay. I, I last yeah. read a book last night. <laughs> Did you? Yes. All of it? I like to read a little bit before I go to, go to sleep. What do you mean? I sit up in bed. Is with your my iPad lamp broken? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> then. Okay. What? I don't have an iPad. What do you, wait, so, what, what screen do you have in your bed with you? Uh, my phone's next to me. Yeah. But I'm, I re- read a book where you can, like, turn the pages. You've got to. I will tell you about Netflix later. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to blow your mind. Liz is in Mozzie Park. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, hey, Liz. Liz. Okay. Are you the person who reads in weird places or did you witness something? No, I'm a reader. Yeah, oh. okay, Liz, talk us through it. Where, where's the weirdest pers- place you've read a book? Okay, uh, my husband and I went to the Monaco Grand Prix <laughs> and I just couldn't <laughs> read. And it was really noisy and very difficult to concentrate on the book, but I tried my heart. Why? Why? Because of that? <laughs> yeah. 
bucket list thing for people to do is to go to the Monaco Grand Prix. And you went there, sat there and read a book. Yes, exactly. I actually wanted to sell my ticket to a scalper and buy a Louis Vuitton handbag. Yes. So I, I bet you did. Oh, really? is, that how much the, is that how much the tickets would have been going They for? were 800 euros. Whoa. Yeah. Did you pay? Uh, uh, think about the Grand Prix, though. That could be an interesting challenge. You could want to fi- finish a chapter every time they do a lap. Oh, you wouldn't True, give a chapter yeah. away. Uh, how, how far long does it take to get a lap? Yeah. All right, so like, well, I mean, it depends yeah. on the book, I suppose. Some yeah. have got short chapters. Yeah. All right, well, well Monaco done. Grand Prix. <laughs> Monaco Grand Prix. We weren't expecting that. Uh, Trev is in Rockingham. Hi, Trev. Hi, good morning, guys. How are you? Good, good Trev. Buddy. Uh, who's the reader? Good. It's actually not me. It's actually an old friend of mine. Yes. Um, so every time he goes to the gym, gets a nice workout done, Afterwards, heads to the sauna, reads his book. In the sauna! <laughs> the pages don't get all, like, damp. <laughs> that's very funny. Is that I am the sorry, no. of the sauna reading. I think saunas are dodgy and gross anyway. Well, I had a great sauna experience in Scandinavia, but did it feels you? like a purist thing to do because, they, you know, they invented it. So then you pull out your super damp I book. I didn't and, and read then, there. And then, like, carefully turn the pages so they don't... Because it, it's just, it's just sweating so much. It's just like, that's I don't not know. good reading. Conditions, you know. I don't know if I walk into a sauna and someone's there reading a book and they look over, I'm walking out because I don't know what's about to happen, but it's not cool. I mean, you've got to find out what they're reading. Like that could be a big factor. Oh. All right, some great Thank examples you. Thank there, you, Trevor. Everybody, um, someone is about to get $150 the mm. Vale Bar and Brasserie experience. Uh, I reckon that's going to go to Liz at the yes. Monaco Grand Prix. The Monaco Grand Prix. It's a <laughs> That's an extraordinary there place to read a book. There you go, Liz. It's the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. All right, hit the song. Oh, not again. So Collingwood did something very yeah. distasteful over the weekend. And they won. That was they won the grand final. Um, a lot of people we were don't like it. not happy with it. Um, happy for Bobby Hill. That's great. Yep, Do you know Bobby's not his real name? His name's Ian. I love that. And you know why he's called Bobby? Why? Because he loved Bob the Builder as a kid. Oh, that's great. That's super cute. That's super cute. Isn't that adorable? But we want to talk about um, the coach, Craig McRae. Yeah. Um, that is unbelievable. Think about it, right? You've got a you've got a big day, a big mm. day, the grand mm. final, mm. right? You don't want anything else on that day. No, you don't. You don't. Like literally, that's it. That's mm. the big thing. Let alone your wife giving birth. Mm. Like that is insane. So it's just before six a.m. he got the phone call. So they said, you better get here. She's going to mm. spit the kid out. Because she'd sort of just said, oh, I just feel a bit unwell because yeah. she didn't want to... tell him. Yeah, didn't want to tell him. And it's like, surely he must have yeah. suspected. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so then... Um, you uh, must know how pregnant you are, surely. His <laughs> wife uh, gave birth uh, just before 8 a.m. grand final morning. So from there, right, so the baby's come out. Um, yeah. And they're like, oh, my God, yes. And then they're like, hey, man, yeah. And he's like, yeah. okay, got to go. And got then they decide to um, call it Maggie, which is gorgeous. Cute. Like magpie. What time was the game? Oh, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon. So say, so say eight o'clock is what? What gonna like you know? Ah, oh, Malia, mm-hmm. and then sign papers. Um, what's that? An hour, an hour and a half. So mm. maybe do you reckon he got away about ten thirty? Yeah. I, I mean, because he, he's not getting to the game at two two p.m. No. to coach. So that you would think they would all be getting there at like eleven o'clock or something in the morning. So it's a tight turnaround. Jeez, I know. You know what I love about Craig McRae is that he said, "Oh, it was already the best day of my life." It's like Craig, you've got two other kids yeah, no, from your previous marriage. What yeah, about them? Yeah. But you know what? Back <laughs> kids these days, like you the know, third is the best. Yeah. in my experience. Oh, really? Mm. Mm, I don't know. Mm, mm, mm. I feel like they stop when they. Oh, you're right, actually, Natalie. They stop when they get perfection. <laughs> <laughs> Second kid of two. <laughs> uh, third kid of three. <laughs> I want to know, right? The day of giving birth. So the day that you've got your baby. Yeah. That should be the biggest thing You'd that happens that would be that the pinnacle. Day. It's hard to believe anything could get better from that point on. But Craig McRae, he's yeah. got the day. I, my, my wife gave birth to beautiful Maggie. Um, also won the... Coached his first premiership. <laughs> Pretty good. Two really good things. Simple question. What other big or unusual thing happened on the day that your child was born? 
Doesn't have to be your favourite child. Could be one of the oh, other. Oh, yeah, could be one that hated. Yeah, hate yeah we don't mind. Yep, yep. yep. All right, we're going to give somebody $300 to spend at Coburn Gateway. Oh, oh nice. nice! The Coburn Live Events lineup for 2023 <laughs> 2024 has dropped with an epic mix of activities, live music, family fun, and more. So check it out. 300, sp- uh, 300 bucks to spend at Coburn Gateway coming your way. Lovely. All right. On the day one of your kids was born, you'd think that would be the best thing that no. happened that day. But no. did something else of yep. note happen yes. on the same day? John, hello. Yeah, how you going? Hey, Good John. mate. What happened when your baby was born? Uh, well, I'll just um, give you a backstory. I'm actually from Victoria, and yeah. but moved over here with um, uh, uh, with my adopted family uh, when I was young. Yeah. And I've been looking for my uh, birth family leading up to, you know, just for for some years. Yeah. Anyway, my wife goes into labour and uh, we have a beautiful boy. And um, that day, <clears throat> the adoption agency called me and said, uh, by the way, your dad's alive oh. and he has lived around the corner from you for the last <gasps> seven years. Stop it! And you also have um, two brothers and a sister. Amazing. Oh, my God. You got a whole lot more family all in one oh day. Oh, my God. So like one, <laughs> all in one day. One yeah. father's met a son and another yes. father's going to be meeting a son. That's amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was, it was quite a story, to be honest. Was oh, meeting yeah. them a good experience for you, John? Yeah, absolutely. The, yeah, uh, I, the uncles and aunties and extended family, uh, you know, were just, um, yeah, all amazing and embraced me. Gorgeous. You know, as being, you know, obviously part of the family, but yeah. Hey, John, so what, suburb, yeah, no, what suburb were you living in and what suburb was your dad living in? So I was living, at the time I was living in Belmont and so was he, just <laughs> five minutes around the corner. Oh, had you ever seen him? Like, <laughs> had you the seen forum? him around? Uh, unfortunately, he's passed away, since passed away. Oh. Um, but yeah, w- w- when I, um, my brother um, was probably the eagerest, to meet me and, and <laughs> sort of demanded a family um, gathering and, you know, I brought my uh, newborn son to, to go and meet him and, and had some uh, fa- seven fantastic years with him. Yeah. Um, but it was just such a great um, enlightening experience just yeah. to meet him and, yeah, it was just brilliant. Are you, are you awesome. I'm super close to the family, your brothers and sisters now? Uh, you know, I'd like to say... Um, Oh, I am, but not not really. But yeah. um, definitely the uncles and aunties and and some of the extended cousins. Um, absolutely, um, my, my uncles and aunties, my birth uncles and aunties have all passed away because my my birth parents were older. So oh. still having my birth, uh, sorry, my adopted um, uncles and aunties all passed away mm. now. So still having birth uncles yes. and aunties have been. Just absolutely amazing. So, yeah, you know. I'm really a great happy story, that, that worked John. out, John. That's Thank lovely. you. Thanks, amazing. Buddy. Imagine that all happening the same day that your baby's born. Liddy's in Marangaroo. Hello. Hi. How are you guys? Great, Lydia. Lydia. What have you got for us? Um, on the same day uh, that I gave birth to my daughter, my sister-in-law, which is my brother's wife, also gave birth. Yes. On the same day. <laughs> Uh, we were both due uh, ten days apart, but yes. we um, so she went in because she was a bit late, so she went in to get um, induced. Yes, and I was very early, and yeah, so we both gave birth like seven days. Sorry, seven hours apart. Who got okay. in first? Was it you or her? <laughs> My sister-in-law. Oh damn it! Who got the most attention the day on that day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> it, is, it is a bit competitive, isn't it? My, you know parents, I mean? my parents were both like, oh, they were so so flustered because we were both in different hospitals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Divided attention. I mean, that is really, it's like two people calling the same dog, isn't it? Like, yes, you know what I mean? Yes, okay, what, what hospital were you in? And what hospital was uh, your sister-in-law in? She was in Mercy Hospital. Yeah. And, well, at the time it was Mercy, I think yeah. it's... Yeah. It's a St. John now. God now, yeah. Yes, that's right. And I was in Osborne Park Hospital. Okay, okay so you're not so too far apart. Osborne Park. No, I but my, for my parents, it was way too far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't know where to go first. <laughs> and, um, and, and you're saying they, they uh, you got the preferential treatment, yes? I think I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
score. Well done, Lydia. Thank you. Oh, you know what? Um, we've got to go back to John from North Lake. I absolutely love that story. Three hundred dollars to spend at Coburn Gateway is going to you, John. The Coburn Live Events lineup for 2023-2024 has dropped with an epic mix of activities, live music, family fun, and more. Go check it out. All yours, John. Well played. Nathan, Nat, and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.